Hey, Senior Bible 2. It's uh, Pastor Kelly. I'm here answering some questions on justification, sanctification, glorification. Um, Alpha says, I have received the slides. My question comes from slide 241, which talks about works and rituals not being the source of salvation. Yes, I believe no one gets saved by their works, but the verse which talks about faith without works being dead confuses me. Why then do we need to work if salvation is through Christ alone? Salvation is through Christ alone. It's by grace through faith, for you have been saved by grace through faith. Um, it was a free gift. You could not earn it. You could not work for it. You don't deserve it. And so the key here is understanding that works come out of our faith. Our faith does not come out of our works. It's, it's um, I believe in Christ, therefore I do. So works are the proof that we have salvation, just like a test is a proof that you have the knowledge of the subject matter. You, 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 you don't have the knowledge of the uh, subject matter. You don't take the test before you have the knowledge of the subject matter. Uh, you don't prove that you're a Christian before you believe. You know, you, you, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. You have to have faith and then you have works. Uh, works is the the proof that you're a believer, um, that you legitimately have faith. And so, and do I judge that? Do you judge that? No, God will judge that. God will judge us all at, at the end. We'll all stand before God, and he'll make the judgment on who had faith, who didn't have faith. That's for him to say. Um, that's not for me to say or for you to say. Um, that is for God to say. But... Um, we will, but faith is how we get saved, not by our works, not by our works. So important to understand this, um, because if you think you can get saved by your works, that's pride. That's saying Jesus is not enough. He is not a sufficient enough sacrifice to save me. I've got to work and have a salvation. Um, it's not Jesus plus sacraments. It's not Jesus plus rituals. It's not Jesus plus religious duty. It's not Jesus plus works. It's not Jesus plus anything. It's Jesus alone, Christ alone that saves us. And so um, very, very important to understand that it's faith and then we work out of our faith. What we believe causes us to work uh, out of that. So um, very important to understand that. Uh, next question is very similar. Uh, she's. Uh, it's a comment by Rihanna saying that uh, Christians always... Uh, tie Christians and good work together, and that's important to do that. We have to act like Christ, very much so. But in reality, a lot of people are broken and when they become saved. That's true as also. They are not uh, outliving holy lives or doing good deeds. They are the lowest point in their life and need a Savior to save them. I think it's important for Christians to remember that we do good works because we want to show how Christ loves us and how we now have so much love to give because he saved us. And how we want to be so much like him. I think that's excellent. Yeah, we usually come to Christ because we realize how low we are, how hurt we are, how much we're in need of a Savior. And so Christian faith, we accept Christ by faith. It's not nothing we've done. It's not the religious that are saved. It's not the good people that are saved. It's not the people who do some good stand, hold good to good standards that are saved. It's people that believe that are saved. And when we come to faith, changes who we are. And yes, uh, young Christians won't uh, automatically go and do good works. They need people to disciple them. They need people to invest in them. They need people to care for them. They need people to bring them along. Uh, that's what's called discipleship and growth in the Christian life. So to, 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 to think a baby Christian can act like an adult Christian that's that's mixed up thinking. They've got to grow in their faith, grow in grace. And so, excellent point. My question for Meredith says, my question is, works do not get us to heaven, but to define our faith lived out. If we do not do actions, can our faith be real and alive? I think um, if our faith is real and alive, like I said earlier, uh, our works, our actions, our good deeds will be proof of our faith. Um Man, you know, it's a hard one because we can't judge. So let's say a, a person who comes to Christ as a teenager and lives for Christ in a good youth group that they're in church and they're 
living for the Lord as best they can. They, they Don't get me wrong, they fall down and get back up, fall down and get back up through that whole time. But then in college, let's say they don't have good accountability, they don't have real good Christian friends in college, and maybe they lose their way, and in fact, don't even attend church, don't really have any good deeds in their life, maybe getting drunk, get, going out and partying, doing things. Have they fallen away from Christ? Not necessarily. You can't judge a person by that space of time. So let's say that same person comes and they get married in the church and and they start to have kids. And man, they're starting to think, man, I, 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 used, to, I used to love the Lord. I used to really be committed to him. I know I'm a Christian. I know I have faith. But man, I fell away for a long time and I need to get back to I need to get back to serving the Lord. I need to get back to doing what he's called me to do. And maybe that person who had faith when they trusted Christ as a teenager, you know what I'm saying, comes back to Christ. To say that person wasn't a Christian during that period, I, I think is is a judgment call that we can't make, you know. Um, will they come back to faith? I, I hope they will. Uh, 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 let me reverse that. Will they come back to doing good works out of their faith? I hope they will, yeah. That doesn't mean that they lost their faith. Now you say, well, what about the person who says, I'm done with faith, I'm, I'm done completely. I'm not sure if that person understood what faith was. Faith is trusting in Jesus. I'm clinging to him uh, with all that I have. And, and it's that um, believing in him. It's not just some mental assent. And so I think uh, we have to be careful in our own lives to judge ourselves and say, am I just... A Christian because my parents are Christians, because I go to this church that told me to make some decision? Or am I a Christian because I have faith in Jesus Christ and who he is? And if I have faith in Jesus Christ, then my deeds, my actions are going to follow that. Okay, uh, Julio, my question is, if actions don't bring us salvation, why are we supposed to follow the Ten Commandments and love other people? Uh, actually, the all of the Ten Commandments are... Um, are, are found in these two statements, love God and love other people. So good, good, good point there that you made, Ten Commandments and love other people. But if you love God and love other people, that fulfills all the Ten Commandments. Because if you love God, you won't put any other gods before him. If you love God, you won't worship any images. If you love God, you'll, you'll keep his day. You'll want to be in worship with his people. If you love God, um, you won't take his name in vain, which means, as we talked about in class, it doesn't mean saying, oh, God. It means saying, means carrying him, his name in a way that's undeserving, that's not holy, that doesn't bring glory to him. And so uh, if you love God, you will do those things. If you love other people, you won't commit adultery. Um, if you love other people, you won't steal. If you love other people, you won't kill. If you love other people, you won't be covetous of what they have. If you love other people, you won't lie to them. So... Loving God and loving other people is how we live out our faith. Again, do not get the cart before the horse. Faith first. You come to faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. It's by grace, something you can't earn, you don't deserve, you can't get on your own. Faith first, then works. Justification, that point in which we're saved, sanctification, that walk of life where we walk in Christ. You've got to be saved first. You've got to come to faith first. And then we live out the life of sanctification, live out the life of works, loving God and loving other people. If you don't love God and love other people, you need to ask yourself, am I really saved? You need to ask yourself. You have no love for God in your heart and no love for other people. You need to ask yourself, am I really saved? Because that's something that changes in our nature. I want to desire God. I'm not perfect. I fall. I'm, I give in to the flesh. I commit sin. Uh, Mr. Kelly commits sin. I fall. I have to get back up again. I lie. I, I cheat. I uh, get angry. I mistreat. I am selfish. And I have to confess those things and give them back to Christ and and go each day saying, Lord, take my hands again today. Take my mouth again today. Take my ears. Take my eyes. Lord, I give it all to you again today because I love you and I want to serve you. I want to follow you. 
even though I'm not uh, perfect at it. It won't be until I am uh, fully redeemed. All right. Joel, why do they, what do they mean when they say we are sons of God? Hey, we've been adopted into God's family. And we have all the privileges of being a part of the family. All the privileges of being a part of God's family. We'll have all the inheritance. We'll have the home in heaven. He's our father. We can come to him now with our requests. Um, he loves us like a father. He, he, uh, he looks out for us like a father. Uh, he's a good, good father, right? The Chris Tomlin song. Joanna Monroe, uh, some people think that only a special few receive the gift of feeling drawn by the Holy Spirit to be saved. Does everyone receive the Holy Spirit at some point in their life? And do we have anything to do with whether it comes to us or not? The Holy Spirit is uh, something, he is God. And so um, he definitely draws whom he draws. I don't know who he draws, and I don't know who he doesn't draw. That's not up for me, and that's not up for you to decide. Uh, we can't decide it. I preach to everyone. Whosoever will may come. If, if, as the Holy Spirit draws people, and they will come, and they will receive the message, they will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they will be saved. Not everyone uh, uh, receives the Holy Spirit. Not everyone uh, comes to Jesus Christ. We know this. This is unfortunate. This is what we wish would not happen. But we know this to be true. I don't know how that happens. And I don't know who is saved and who is not saved. I don't make those judgments. God makes those judgments. Um, I can't look at you and go, well, you're not really saved. I can tell in your eyes. You know, or I can see by what you just said. You're not really a Christian. Well, I've said some things that I regret. Maybe people didn't think I was a Christian at that time. And maybe I wasn't acting like a Christian at the time. It doesn't mean I'm not a Christian. Um, faith is what makes us a Christian. So I don't know when the Holy Spirit is drawing people and when he's not drawing people. I don't know that. That's, that's the Holy Spirit of God. I can't, I don't manage that. I don't have control of that. I just know that if the Holy Spirit is calling you, you need to come to repentance. You need to come to faith. You need to say, I, I believe. Um, that's, what, that's what I hold to. Isaac, my question is, are actions the only way to prove salvation or is the change of heart? And if it's the change of heart, why are actions that much important? Well, change of heart shows through your actions. Change of heart can't, well, I've got a change of heart. Well, anybody can say that. But a change of heart is shown through how you live, how you act, the works you do, the deeds you do. Sorry, I've got some um, stuff on my phone that keeps ringing there. Um, so actions show your change of heart, shows that you're born again. Change of heart is being born again into a new creature. Uh, let's go down here to Dayton. My question is, how do we prove our faith if we don't act on it? I agree. We, actions are the proof of our faith. Um, our deeds are the proof of our faith. But I'm not the judge. That's, that's another thing. I, you say, you know, by your fruits you shall know them. Sure. Uh, we, we shall know there are Christians by their love. Yes. But I don't get to judge it. God judges that. I won't be the judge over some other... I'm not going to be the judge over the rest of this class and go, well, you know, Dayton, you're okay, but Joel, you didn't make it. And, and, you know, I make him do that with a passing or a testing grade. But I can't do that for judging who, your salvation. And none of us can. None, none of us can. So uh, be careful how, how much we judge other people. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know what, what their situation is. As Rihanna said, a lot of times they're baby Christians or they're people who have been beaten down and they're coming to Christ. So I can't judge it. However, my own life, I need to, I need to say, hey, am I really a Christian? And if I'm a really Christian, am I really showing people through what I do and what I say, how I treat others, my actions, my good deeds, my works? And so um, that's why I want to encourage you. Let's see. We got Nellie. My question, if a Christian commits suicide, is, she, is he or she still saved? Yes, if they are a Christian, they are still saved. No sin can separate them from Christ. They are always a Christian if they believe. Suicide is a sin. 
Don't get me wrong, suicide is a sin. It's not a mortal sin. Uh, the Catholic Church has said that suicide is a mortal sin, meaning it's a sin that can't be overcome or can't be forgiven. No, uh, suicide is a sin, though, because it's coming to a point where you say, I despair so much, I don't even trust God anymore. God is in control. God is in charge. You need to trust him. And he may be bringing us through pain or hurt or anguish to teach us, to train us, to cause us to be more like Jesus. We will go through the sufferings like Jesus did. The Bible promises us that as Christians. So, yeah, to not trust him is a sin, is always a sin. And to give in to despair, that's what suicide is, giving in to despair. But it is not, if you are a Christian, you will be with Jesus in paradise. Uh, the thief on the cross, he was executed because of something he did against the government. He, he was with Jesus. So, uh, not right to commit suicide. No, not a good thing. Uh, Christ can bring you out of despair. He can. Uh, ben says, I'm, Benjamin says, I'm going to give a hypothetical and ask a question from it. If a person were to believe in the Lord, trust him, do deeds for him, and act as a Christian. This is good. I know where you're going with this, Ben. And act as a Christian would, would for years, but then suddenly decide to stop believing. Would they still be saved because, uns, because become unsaved at that very moment? Or would they be unsaved from the very start? That's a great question, Ben. I don't know. And neither do you. Um, they, I, I, I don't believe they lost their salvation. I believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. But I just have to believe that they they don't have a proper understanding of what it means to be saved. I just have to believe that they made some decision where they they felt like they needed to carry on their parents' faith or, or they felt that they were involved in some church program that told them to live a certain way, but they never really came to faith in Jesus Christ. That's I, I, that's what I hold to. That's what I hold to. And I believe that because Jesus says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He says, once you receive the Holy Spirit, it's guarantee that you will be sealed to the day of redemption. Now listen, like I said, there could be people who fall away. Will they never come back to Christ in their lifetime? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. And to claim that I do would be uh, disingenuous. And, uh, but I, I tell you what, I believe that if you're a Christian, if you're saved, if you have faith in Christ, that he will never let you go. He will never let you go. And, um, that he will hold on to you. And that's what matters. Not whether you've hold, held on to him, but whether he will hold on to you. And so I can't answer this. If this person was really saved, I have to say yes. That's my answer. According to the, what I see in the scriptures, I would say Yes that person would be saved if they were if they really came to faith that person would be saved on the day of uh, on the day of judgment and uh, the, even if they uh, said that they've fallen away I have other friends who would disagree with me um, and, and uh, would say that people could apostatize themselves they could fall away from the faith that's the word apostatize means fall away from the faith I I don't see that in scripture. I don't see that in scripture. Great question. Paul, my question is if you are a Christian, but the people close closer to you are not, are you doing right if you don't share the word of God with them? Well, no, you need to share the word with them, man. I mean, not you, Paul, but all of us need to share the word with them. We all need to, yeah, no, you've got to, you got to tell people the gospel. Um, stand for what's right. It doesn't mean you have to be a jerk or a judgmental person. You know, oh, I'm holy and you're not, or anything like that. You say, hey, man, I'm a sinner. I'm, I need Jesus. Jesus came to save me. That doesn't mean you can't hang out with people that aren't that, that are that are uh, not Christians. I mean, you have to. Everybody hang out with has to be a Christian. But what it means is that you're you're in a, a place where you're trying to win people to to Jesus Christ. Um trying to have influence over them for the gospel. And that's just being a leader. That's just being a person of integrity. Um, just standing for the things that are right to stand for. Telling people the truth. 
in love. You don't have to be a jerk about it. You don't have to be obnoxious about it. Uh, just in love saying, hey, you know, Jesus is who I'm about. I'm about him and I love his word and I want, I want to share it with you. Uh, start a Bible study with him. Text them a verse. It's easy. It's not hard. Just get just get on your text and text them a verse. Say, this verse means a lot to me. And just start texting them verses or just telling them about who Jesus is. Hey, encourage them to read Mark, the Gospel of Mark. See, find out who Jesus says he was. They might be surprised. and In fact, they might even believe. They might even believe. They might even come to faith. Wow, wouldn't that be crazy? Because the Holy Spirit can draw them and, and bring them to faith. You never know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, share your faith. It, it's wrong not to share your faith. It's, it's not just wrong. It's, it's just, if you love Jesus, if I love a certain restaurant, I have no trouble talking about that restaurant with people. If I, man, I, I went to this restaurant, I love that place. Oh, man, the steak is so good. Oh, they do such a great job with the salads. They're so fresh. It's so one. And I'll talk about it. And that's, that's no comparison. Restaurant and G. I I mean, if I, love G, if I say I love Jesus, I, I should be able to just talk about him. I love my wife. I'm, I'm happy to talk about my wife, who she is, what she does for me. I love my wife, Jenny. I love Jesus. Just talk about him. Just, just, he, he just needs to be a part of who you are. Not just on Sundays, but a part of who you are. Okay, great. Uh, I, I hope these answered some questions for you guys. If you have more questions, put it on uh, here and we can talk about those. Um, we've got your last verse of the, uh, of the year. Oh, I guess that happened yesterday. I take that back. Forget that. Minus that. Uh, by Born Again Paper, due April 30th. Blessing to you guys. I hope you have a great week. A great weekend. Bye.